Hey everybody, Rust Quick Electric here with you this week to bring about a build that has to do with one of the prior builds that I did in which I am showcasing the Circle of Death minigame. I've been uh, working on it slowly, doing each part independently so that everybody can get the most practical use out of every portion of the part. Now this week I bring about a pretty fun one because to me this kind of sets apart every other minigame because now you can actually have a dice roll accumulator with independent function. So I present the independent accumulator trigger. For this build we will be using three timers, three branches, the and switch, the or switch, a blocker, the counter, and the ceiling light just as a means of demonstrating the actual function of this. Now the first timer is actually as well just for demonstration. It will be your dice input, but for today we're just going to use the timer for simplicity's sake. Now you may be wondering what the actual use of this is. The idea behind it is, is that as you have a pseudo dice roll, it will accumulate during a set time duration and then output independently X amount of die roll. So let's get into the build. I already have the power set up with simply two generators splitting into two splitters to just give us six separate power outputs. You can do that however you'd please. We're going to start with a timer, and then we're going to go into our branch here, along with the counter above. Now this is the main circuit here, and you'll see as I build this that I did build upon my initial uh, improved loop build. So we're going to go ahead and give power to this, like so. We're going to set this time to one second per increment. It's going to output into our first branch. Try to get this a little neater. Now, there is going to be no toggle on since this is going to be a manually activated demonstration. Second off, we need to power up our counter. So, this will display our increment ongoing. We're next going to wire up our second timer. Go ahead and add some power to this as well. Like so. Now, the toggle on of this timer actually does matter, since it is part of the real circuit. So we're going to have the branch go on into the toggle on which is our power out, and then the branch out is going to go into the increment counter up, like so. We're going to move into our blocker, right here. We're going to wire the output into the block pass-through. This means that anytime this timer is ongoing, it will block the pass-through, creating our delay, since this is our delay timer. Now this timer is going to be set to whatever amount of time you require the accumulation to occur. So we're going to set it, just for fun right now, to a time of 8. Before we forget, we're going to have the power in come from a power source, like so. And then we're going to go into our AND switch. Go ahead and add these as well. The AND switch is going to have an input A coming from the blocker. And then we're going to have our input B of the AND switch come from the counter pass through. That means while the accumulation is occurring, there will be a pass through of power allowed. So we're going to set the target to a value of 1 because we want any time it begins an accumulation to trigger this AND switch. We'll have our OR switch directly next to it. We'll have the power out of our AND switch go into the input A of our OR switch. And then we're going to continue on the build. We'll have our third timer now. We'll just go ahead and add the last few components. We'll have the branch above and the branch to the right of it. And then we will have our ceiling light above for demonstrative purposes. So you can go ahead and get that up there. We're going to power the timer from our main power source, like so. We're 
going to also have the output of this timer going into this branch, the power out of this branch going to the input of the branch to the right. Now, this is where you need to be a bit careful. You need to make sure that the branch out of this rightmost branch is coming all the way across into the decrement counter, like so. The power out of the rightmost branch is going to go into the input B of our OR switch. And then last but not least, we have the branch out of the above going into our light. I'm just going to no clip on up here so that we can get this easily in there, like so. Now, we want this timer to be set to a time as 1 as well, because that's what our independent trigger value is. We want a 1 second tick. Now, you can adjust that to whatever you'd like, but for the instance of a dice roll, it seems most feasible to use a 1 second duration. Now you'll see that the uh, only thing we have left is the OR output. This is going to come across into the toggle on of this timer. And now let me go ahead and show you it in action. So we're going to pretend as if our dice was wired up to this and it does an accumulation roll of let's say it rolls a 3. So you'll see that the time delay is waiting for more accumulation. It's at a power of 3. And then as that duration ends, you now have three separate outputs as well as resetting your increment counter. So we'll go ahead and do this again. We'll do a value of four this time. Three, four. It's accumulated four. It's going to wait out the duration timer, and then it's going to output four separate outputs while decrementing on the counter. So just to clarify, this is the accumulation force time. This is how long you want it to wait before it begins to decrement the counter with independent outputs. We have the output duration, which is one second for the dice, and then this timer is simply a placeholder for your dice. So your dice configuration would be set up, say, on this wall. It would output the roll directly into the counter, triggering the accumulation timer, and then as that timer ceases to function, it will then begin to do the one second tick outputs to an independent source. With this functionality, I hope to see lots of minigames. I know specifically for the minigame I'm making, which is the Ring of Death, I next have the number exclusion as well as elimination of players. But this can be used for a number of games such as Yahtzee, Monopoly, any dice-based game. And that's about all I got for you today. We'll see one more example of it. One out, waits out the full duration of the accumulation timer, and then it outputs until decremented to zero. As with any video, I welcome you guys to check out our community discord with a link in the description. We recently surpassed 1.6 thousand subscribers, which is a phenomenal amount of people. And the, con the conversation and contributions of everybody to the chat has been awesome. So I thank you all for that, and I wish you guys a wonderful day. Thank you.